Hello and welcome to another video where this time we're going to have a bit of fun experimenting with the gradient tool and seeing how it can be used to affect the tones in both the colour and a black and white version of this image. Then a little bit later on in the video we're going to be creating a border using the brush tool. OK, let's make a start. First thing we're going to do is over to the Layers panel. We're going to duplicate the background layer. So I'm going to use the shortcut, which is Command J or Control J. That's Command J, Control J. There's our duplicated layer. Next, we're going to rename this layer. So I'm going to bring my cursor over the text. We're going to double click. That's now highlighted it. And I'm going to call this what it's going to become, which is BW, which of course is black and white. Now to create our black and white image, we're first of all going to head to the Enhance menu, Adjust Colour. We're going to go down to Remove Colour and there's our black and white. But I think we can do better. Heading back up to Enhance, we can come down to Adjust Lighting. This time we're going to go to Shadow and Highlights. And you can see how we've now brought through more detail around this area here and into the faces as well. It's almost made them smile. But if we come to the Light and Shadows, you can see the default is 35%. Now you can click on the slider. You can move it uh, by just clicking and moving it left or right. It can be a little bit uh, tricky at times. An easier way is bring your cursor over the text. You'll notice the way your cursor has now got a double arrow going through it. Click down. I'm going to move this to the left. And as we move it across, you can see those shadows are just reducing slightly. Going to take it further. That looks better. 18%. Dark and highlights. Now, I rarely use this slider. If I do, it's 3 4% maximum. Take it too far and the image looks a little bit muddy. You can see the way it's just taking the detail out of the clouds. So I'm going to back this right up using 0%. Midtone contrast, on the other hand, brilliant. Move this to the left and the image becomes less contrasty. Move it to the right and you add more contrast to the image. I'm going to take it, just backing it up very slightly. And that's where this method of using the text there, that looks much better. Like the tonal range that we now have with this picture. And if I take a look, switching the preview off, there it is before, there it is after. A lot more detail. We're now going to click on OK. For the next stage, we're going to put a new empty layer above our black and white layer. So coming up to the Create New Layer icon, we're going to click on this layer 1. But once again, we're going to rename it. I'm going to double click. It's now highlighted. We're going to call this uh, Gradient. Now for the Gradient, heading over to the Toolbox, we're going to click on the Gradient tool. Coming down to the Tool Options. We've got the uh, foreground to background. We've got the radial gradient. I'm going to leave that as it is. But if we click in the window, yes, we can see there it is, foreground to background. And we've got these gradients available to us. Tend to be a little bit strong. But we've got presets, and these are the default with other gradients as well. Now, my favorite way of working, let's just close this down. Let's close that down as well, so we've got far more space. So with the gradient tool selected, I'm going to right click and there it is. There's that same panel with the default gradients. Clicking where it says default, we've got these gradients that we can experiment with. So let's start off with color harmonies. Now I tend to use the lighter gradients. I find they work far better. So let's click on our medium spectrum. We're going to bring it out. And remember that we had the radial gradient. So I'm just going to press enter or return to remove that panel. For the moment, let's come to the center of our layer, clicking down, dragging it out into this area here, releasing it. And you can see there is our radial gradient. Now, if I click down again, the further out we drag it, the larger that gradient becomes. You can also come to the top corner or any of the sides, drag it across, and you then get that sort of effect. Now, to see the image underneath, if we come up to the blend mode, and it's worth trying overlay and it's also worth trying soft lights. Let's go to overlay for the moment. And you can see it looks a little bit strong, but don't forget you can always reduce the opacity down and something in that region can look pretty good. It's also worth trying soft lights, so let's go for that. Yeah, that works much better. Just reducing it down, trying it from a different angle. So bringing it over here, you don't need to redo layers or anything. You can just bring your cursor over. You can apply it multiple times doesn't matter. Something like that could look pretty good. 
but there's more. Let's right click again, let's change it and some of my favourites tend to be under the pastel range. This one here, absolutely fantastic for a sepia tone. So it's brown, tan, beige, thank you for that. Right, come into the top corner, that was a useful prompt. Bringing it across into this area here, and there it is, there's our sepia tone. And what I like with this is we've got darker over here, just emphasizing this character. And the image itself, forgot to mention, was taken at the Sidmouth Folk Festival. This bunch of merry people are playing uh, the music for the Morris dancers and the way they dress determines the style of Morris dancing that they do. Right, so there it is. There's our gradient. I think that really does. That adds very nicely to the image. Well, I'll tell you what, let's see the way it works with colour. Before we do that, let's just take the opacity up to 100%. That looks better. Switching off the visibility of our black and white. Yes, boy, I like the way that works. I'm making the sky a lot warmer and you can see the areas around here. It seems to brighten those up as well. That will do nicely. Okay, let's switch the black and white back on. Let's come to our gradient layer. We're going to duplicate that. I'm going to use Command J or Control J. That's Command J, Control J. We've now got gradient copy. So let's just double click. I'm now going to swipe over where it says copy. That's now highlighted. And I'm just going to put two. So we've now got gradient two. Switching off the visibility of our gradient layer. I'm now going to bring my cursor back over the image, you can see there it is uh, there, just right clicking. Let's try something like uh, this, see how that works with the image, dragging it over, releasing it there, that gives some nice tones to the picture, dragging that over again, something in that area, seeing how it works with colour, that looks pretty good as well. Turning on the black and white and one final thing with the gradients, if you just right click again, let's go to this one here. Now with this one here, if I just bring it over the image, let's take it in this direction and see how that works. Now this is yellow through to the purple color there. Let's go down to our tool options. Let's click in the window and you can see, yes, it's yellow through to the uh, purple color. What if you want to change this? What if I want to go through to green? So I'm going to click here on this color stop. We're now going to click in the color and we're going to change this. I'm going to lift this slider up. And as I lift it up, you can see we can take it into the greens. And I'm just keeping an eye on this box here. This is the one I'm interested in. That's the color we've got. This is our new color. And as I move it up, just looking for a nice pastel green, something like that will do nicely. We're now going to click on OK. Do we need this uh, color stop here? I don't think we do. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click on the bin. It's now gone. Right, do we need this one? Let's click on it. Yeah, I think we do. I'm going to take it, I'll change my mind as you could probably tell. Take it up a little bit further. Do we need this one? No, we don't. Let's get rid of that. I'm just going to drop this one back. Now make sure you actually see the word color stop. If you come to the side there, click to add stop. No, you do not want to do that. So click on it to highlight it. Now use the slider here once again. You can see the way bringing your cursor over the text. We can just take it back to 50%. Let's click OK to this. So we can create our own gradients. You can change the colors. You can do everything or anything, should I say, with them. So it's well worth experimenting with that. Just taking the green in the opposite direction there. Yeah, that could look pretty good. Let's see how it works with color. Brilliant stuff. Right, so switching this on as well. Seeing how the two work together. Don't forget, it looks a little bit bright, so just try reducing down the opacity and seeing how that works. Now for the border, we're going to come to our background layer. I'm going to double click, so we're going to unlock it. This is going to become layer zero. I'm going to leave it like that for the moment. Next, we're going to put new empty layers underneath layer zero. So we're going to come up to the create new layer icon, hold down control or command. So on a PC, hold down the control key on a Mac, hold down the command key, clicking down once, still holding down that command or control. Good, because you can now click on it again. We're now going to fill layer two with white. Now a very simple shortcut. We've got the default colors. If you've got any other colors at this stage, it's a good idea as well, because this will come into play as far as our border is concerned. Any other colors, press D on the keyboard, 
we want black as our foreground, white as our background. Now we're going to use control backspace on a PC. That's control backspace on a PC. It is command delete. That's command delete on a Mac. And you have filled layer two with white. Right, let's click on layer one. We're now going to clip layer zero. I'll tell you what, let's rename it before we do it. Let's call this uh, what it is, which is color. We're now going to clip the color layer and the black and white layer to layer one. Sounds complicated, but it's very easy to do. Now, all you need to do is on a PC, hold down the Alt key. So that's the Option key on a Mac. So hold down Alt or Option. And as you bring your cursor between the two layers, notice the way it changes to the square with that angled arrow. Click down. We have now clipped it to layer one. We're going to do the same with the black and white. So bring in your cursor between the two, holding down Alt on a PC, Option on a Mac. There it is. There's that square with that angled arrow. Click down. We have now clipped the black and white, the color layer to layer one. It's disappeared. All we can see is that white background. So let's click on layer one. We're going to rename this. We're going to call this what it's going to be, which is our border. Right next, we're going to pick up the brush tool. And with the brush tool, don't forget, we've reset those colors. We've got black as the foreground color. Looks like, a, like I've got yeah, a pretty big brush. I can now click down. And as I click down, we start to reveal that uh, layer, that image. And that's because I'm using black. But for a border, this is going to be a pretty uninteresting effect. So let's head down to tool options. Now with tool options, yes, I've got a soft edge brush. It's a 200 pixel soft edge brush. And if you click here, you can see there's our default brush panel. But as we did with the gradient tool, if you bring your brush out over the work surface, if you right click, there's that panel, 200 pixel brush. And I like using this method. You can choose a new brush. You can adjust the size of it, very small, 27 pixels. You can use the right hand square bracket to make that brush larger and clicking down. That could be a pretty interesting brush to create a border with. But if we right click again, my favorite here from the defaults is down under wet media brushes. And it's this one here, not just because of the name, but the effect is pretty brilliant as well. So clicking on drippy water, nine pixel, absolute tiny brush as we can see. Using that right hand square bracket, going to take it up in size, something like this. And as I click down and go around the image, the reason I really like this, it's a bit like pouring water over your picture. It just seems to develop before your eyes. It's absolutely fantastic. Coming around to this area here, down around, just going to go around it very, very quickly. And with this method as well of creating our border, we can come into it, we can change, we can adjust it at any time as well. So coming down around that part, perhaps making the brush a little bit smaller using the left hand square bracket, just dropping it down a touch there and just coming in and around. If you do get too close to the edge, oops, like what I have done there, coming around this part, like what I have done there too, simply pick up the eraser tool. With the eraser tool, I have got yeah, a soft edge brush. We can go around there. We can just clean that up. Something like that will do nicely. Right, let's just switch the black and white off so we've got color. We can see the way the border's working like that. Not so keen on that um, yeah, solid white finish. So let's go down to layer two. We're going to go to filter. We're going to come down to texture. We're going to go to texturizer. On the filter gallery, texture, texturizer. I've got sandstone, which is my favorite. Scaling is 115%. I'm going to right click. Let's go to 100%. Let's see how that's going to look. I'm going to take the scaling up. I'm going to move it right up into that area there. It does depend on the file size you are using. I've got a full size image here, so that 193% looks good. Relief 7 looks good as well. Lighting from the top left. Let's click OK to that. Looks a lot better than having just the solid white. So there it is. Let's just switch the uh, black and white on. Let's just have a look at it with sepia. I like the way this is working. There it is with sepia with a touch of color. Perhaps just to finish it off, we're going to go to an adjustment layer of levels. Taking a look at the histogram, a little bit of a gap there, just bringing it in just to give a touch more there. 
contrast. And if you look down the bottom, here we have that square with that little angled arrow indicating that we can now clip it to the layer, which is immediately on top of, in this case, gradient two. And if you click on it again, it unclips it. So there it is. The whole point with this though is experiment, see what you come up with. If I just turn the black and white off, there it is with color, really like what these uh, two gradients have done with this image, turning off the, no, I think we'll keep the sepia. There it is with a little bit of color as well. Just love the tones that adds to it. And there it is with black and white. Experiment with those gradients, experiment with the colors in the gradients and see what you come up with. Right clicking, we're gonna to go to a black background. I'm gonna press tab on the keyboard to remove all the panels and just open it up to fit on screen. Go on give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe as there's lots more videos to come. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.